Coronavirus has been one of the topics running through everyone's mind since 2020 began. Half the year has passed and the situation is only getting worse. We are all desperately waiting for a vaccine or a medicine that will end this pandemic, aren't we? Watch this entire video to learn approximately how long it can take for a vaccine to be developed. So welcome to MedChat with Dr. Shilpa. Coronavirus is a large family of viruses. It contains more than 100 different strains, but most of them infect animals. Seven have infected humans so far. And among the seven, three have no known to cause severe symptoms. One incident happened in 2002, which caused severe acute respiratory syndrome, which also happened in China. Then in 2012, another strain caused Middle East Respiratory Syndrome in the Middle East. And then we know from 2019, COVID-19 has been haunting us. All these three strains are believed to have passed from a bat then to another animal, which is known as an intermediate host, and from that animal to humans. So now, before looking at how vaccines work, let's try to understand how our immune system works first. When a disease-causing pathogen, for example, like a virus or bacteria, enters our body, our body recognizes this as a foreign substance. Antigens will be present on the surface of the virus or bacteria and our body starts producing antibodies to destroy these antigens. After this, our body remembers that such an infection occurred and certain cells called memory cells in our immune system stores this information. So if you're ever infected with the same disease again, this time our body is able to respond more quickly and produce an the antibodies at a quicker rate. Now about vaccines. Vaccines are made up of killed or weakened virus or bacteria. Since it's killed or weakened, it does not actually produce a disease but gives us immunity against the disease. When a vaccine is introduced into our body, our body produces antibodies against the antigens in the vaccine, just like in a real disease scenario. Let's understand this by using an example. Chickenpox is a disease that everyone's familiar with, isn't it? So the virus responsible for causing chickenpox is known as varicella zoster virus. The vaccine for chickenpox contains a weakened version of varicella zoster virus. So when we get the vaccine for chickenpox, our body recognizes it the uh, antigen in the varicella zoster virus as a foreign particle and starts producing antibodies to destroy the antigen. Then the memory cells in our immune system remembers it as such that an infection has occurred. So if we ever encounter the virus responsible for chicken box in real life, this time our body can produce the antibodies at a quicker rate and Hence, we won't have such a severe symptoms that is usually associated with chickenpox. The development of vaccine is a long and complex process. It can take 10 to 15 years. When a vaccine is approved for testing, it's first tested in animals. This is known as a preclinical stage. After the results are found to be satisfactory, it, then it will be approved for clinical testing. And the clinical stage contains three phases. Each phase can take up to two years, sometimes even longer. And in phase one, a few volunteers are used. And then in phase two, hundreds of volunteers. And phase three, thousands of volunteers. The results from each phase is analyzed carefully and if found unsatisfactory, the entire procedure can be aborted altogether. If found satisfactory, after phase 3, it can enter the market for public use. But still, there can be a phase 4 where the safety and efficacy of the vaccine is ensured continuously. The vaccine developed in shortest duration so far is mentioned as the mumps vaccine which took four years. So let's wait and see if a vaccine for COVID-19 can break that record. Since vaccines are given to healthy people, that is people without the disease, it's extremely important that it does not produce any unwanted effect. The Qatar incident in 1955 was one such unwanted incident where a batch of polio vaccines contained live polio virus instead of inactivated polio virus. 
which led to paralysis in 250 children. So what I'm trying to say is even if our current situation calls for rapid action, I'm sure none of us want to compromise the quality of the vaccines. Currently, that is as of July 9, 2020, more than 100 vaccines are being tested worldwide, but according to the WHO website, only 21 have entered clinical trials. Among the 21, only two has entered phase three of the clinical trials. One is a vaccine by University of Oxford and AstraZeneca in the UK. Another one is a vaccine by Sinovac, which is a Chinese-based company. Moderna, which is a US-based company, is in its phase two of the clinical trials. And our India's own Covaxin by Bharat Biotech is planning to conduct phase one and phase two clinical trials at the same time. ICMR had previously mentioned that a vaccine will be out by August 15th, but it later clarified it did not mean that to be a deadline, but just wanted the vaccine trials to happen at a quicker rate. Because actually, if you think about it, August 15th is really not possible. It would take at least 15 to 18 months before the vaccine development is complete. So don't expect anything till 2021. Even if a vaccine is developed, another challenge would be producing it in such large quantities and at a cost-effective rate so that it can reach everyone. Similarly, the development of medicines is a long and complex process. That is why currently the focus is on trying to find out if medicines already in the market used for other diseases can be used against COVID-19. So until all this happens, all we can do is continue maintaining social distancing, washing our hands at a regular interval and wearing masks whenever we go out. So until next time, thank you.